Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium and I predict the future in the political arena. Now, I also do a lot of other things. I have a very sort of um, schizophrenic channel <laughs> in that I do a lot of spiritual things. So if you're interested in that, check out my channel, check out the playlist. There's lots there for you to see about everything from ascension to energy to vibration to Sasquatch and the occasional alien. But anyway, today we're going to talk about politics because, well, politics is really in the news, isn't it? So I've asked for your questions and you've been so kind as to send them in and I really do appreciate that. And today I'm going to endeavor <laughs> to have my spirit guides help me answer them. I am a channel. I am going to be channeling these messages. I like to think that I'm about 60% spirit guides, 40% Susan. It's really just enough human to just muck it all up, but I do the best I can. And, uh, you know, the spirit guides think it's good that they like the human component <laughs> because if I was just channeling this in this sort of robotic way, well, you wouldn't be as interested, right? So the fact that Susan gets in here and has to try to figure out, frankly, what the hell they are saying to her, well, the message somehow gets through a little bit better and they like that. So let's get started. Now, right off the bat, we have a great question from Star Sapphire. And the question is, when will the majority of Americans, and I cannot believe the word you used, enthusiastically support climate change measures? Thank you, Susan. Star Sapphire, you've got to be a teacher. And I'm going to bet even without psychic abilities that you're a kindergarten teacher because, well, you're just so positive. I mean, it's just so refreshing to have such positivity because you want to know a couple of amazing things. First of all, you want to know the majority of Americans the majority of Americans. And then you want to know, enthusiastically support climate change. Well, if I'm going to use your definition in this question, I'm going to tell you that never, never, we're never going to have the majority enthusiastically support climate change. Now, just for that split second that you saw me pause, <laughs> I had a whole vision for my spirit guides and I've done a video on climate change where I channeled where I thought, where the spirit guys thought we would be in, say, you know, 50 years, roughly. And I see us living in a bubble city. And frankly, I'm all excited about it. It looks really cool. It looks like a regular city, except for that there's a bubble over your head because, well, we polluted Mother Earth and we have to live in a bubble. So will we be enthusiastic at that point? Probably not, because I just don't think Americans are enthusiastic people. I just... I'm not sure that I can use that descriptor when I'm talking about Americans in mass. So I'm not sure about your question. Now, if you wanted to say, when will Americans wake the F up and do something before maybe they wake up in the middle of the night and there's water and like a shark, you know, swimming through the room or perhaps um, some other kind of ecological thing. I would tell you that we're in the process right now. What is happening? And I just looking at that picture, they're sending me the image. You know, we, we are not quick to change. <laughs> Humans are not quick to change. You know, we kind of have to be pushed. And right now they're showing me, you know, uh, civilizations that have just uh, been pushed to disappear, pushed to move, right? Like uh, that one minute they're there and then they decide to just leave. Well, there's reasons for that because we have to be pushed. So when will humans be pushed or specifically Americans be pushed? And what's going to push them when it comes to climate change? Well, what I see is money. Money is what's going to push us. When we can no longer insure our homes, and this is already happening in the coast coastal regions of the United States, but it's also happening in other parts of the country as well that get other types of weather. You're seeing the private sector step back from insuring, and then you're going to see the government step in. This is what happens, right? Everybody, not everybody, but I would say the Republicans are all for free market until it's not profitable. And then they just drop it like it's a hot potato and walk away. <laughs> and I see this is going to happen also with healthcare. So I think in these areas where it's not profitable, for these companies to make money, 
they're just going to walk away. And who's going to step into the breach is the government. Now, if the government steps into the breach, then you've got Republicans in Congress saying uh, the government can't do this because we're not paying for people's bills. So you're going to see some fiscal responsibility is the words I'm getting. So what I think is going to happen is the government is going to step into the breach. But what I see, like specifically, let's just take Florida or the coast of Texas or the coast of the, the country, the southern coast, for example, I think what is going to happen is, is that the government's going to step in, but the government's going to require some um, some steps on the humans' behalf. And I say humans because the guides are speaking, but on on their constituents' behalf, right? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna help you raise your house, right? Like so, in the coastal areas around Texas, after a hurricane, the government FEMA came in and said we'll give you a grant to raise your house for free, right? Because all they got to do, I say all, but this is the spirit guides. Whenever they say all you have to do, I know it's the spirit guides. But, you know, let's say that's $50,000 to raise that house. Well, that's a lot cheaper than bailing that same person out, you know, time after time after time after time. Um, and because they're not going to get insurance, right? So you're going to see this public-private sort of, thing working out. And then you're going to see people being more on board with climate change. I don't know about enthusiastically, but definitely more on board. And I think you're going to see this in the next five years. In the next five years, you're going to see some real, I mean, I, I understand if you're screaming at the screen right now, don't scream. Uh, but I understand that we should be seeing this. Like It's pretty obvious to most of us, but it's not obvious to the people that make the money when when the powers that be that have the pocketbook when they decide it's a problem it'll be a problem for the rest of us that is coming five years five years we're not going to be in a bubble in five years but we're going to be in uh we're going to be in a better understanding and we're going to be more proactive in five years and is that going to stop is that is that too late not in some ways it's not too late in other ways it is too late right maybe we will have to either raise all of the coastal areas and live like Venice, you know, or we're going to have to retreat from those coastal areas. And I think eventually we're going to retreat from these problem areas. And I think that we're going to have safe places to live. Now, I will just close this question with this. We pollute, we are polluting Mother Earth, but please don't feel sorry for her because she's a lot bigger than us and she's going to call the shots here. So she can, and I talked to Mother Earth. I mean, not, we're on good terms. So she can fix this. We are nothing but a gnat on the backside of her backside. And she, believe me when I say she can regenerate. She may not be the same, but she she's not the same now from when dinosaurs roamed the earth. She's regenerated many times. So I'm not worried about Mother Earth because She's going to push us away from these sensitive areas and then the sensitive areas are going to go through an evolution. So I think we're all going to be fine, but it's going to be a new type of fine. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question and say hi to your kids for me. Okay. M. Turpel says, will corporate price gouging stop and food prices go down? Will, so you want to know, will it ever happen? Yes, absolutely. It's going to stop because, not because of a reason you think, actually, either, in my opinion. Um, what I'm seeing right now is competition. That's what I'm seeing. I, I would like to say, I would like to be able to tell you that Congress is going to pass some law that will stop price gouging, or they're going to drag these corporate barons before a congressional committee and slap their little hand. I'd like to say that all that's going to happen, but I don't see it happening. I see competition. So because, and this seems to be a pretty across the board, like for a minute there, I was even seeing like oil and natural gas, I mean, energy as well as food. There's going to be new players because why? Well, there's a bigger profit margin. When you have a bigger profit margin, then these small players can actually get in the game or perhaps even new big players can get in the game and undercut because the profit margin is so big 
There's so much room there to play with. Now, now we got a ball game. Now somebody can come in and undercut this company by 50% and still make 50%. So it's ripe for these types of new companies to come in and undercut those companies. Now, I know you might say this sounds uh, like, how can this ever happen? Because all the food is owned by three or four companies. Well, my last video, I talked about that. I talked about monopolies being broken apart. And I think this is going to be something that is at least in the beginning is going to be threatened by the government to these price gouging companies. Hey, if you've got so much control of the competitive market, maybe we need to look at you. Maybe you're a monopoly. Well, you know, that's going to get, because that, that's the one thing I think that puts the fear of God in these companies is being called a monopoly and having the government saying, we're going to break you apart. You're, you're too big and there's no competition. So what the guides had said was competition. Either the government's going to break them apart or there's going to be these new competitors come in and perhaps even both. And before you say nay, say, nay, say, I want you to think about cost plus. Is that the name of that guy? He has the, um, he owns the Dallas basketball team and he's on Shark Tank and he started a prescription medicine service, a prescription medicine service that is like $5. You can get your prescription for $3, $5. He doesn't offer all of the prescriptions, but he offers a pretty good selection and he obviously is aiming to add more. What did he do? He just cut the feet out from under everybody. I mean, you probably, you might could get it cheaper from him than maybe even potentially on your insurance, you know? So don't think a new player can't come in and be a competitor because they can and don't think the American people won't pivot to a new brand, even if it is a generic brand. Right now, they're showing me Aldi's, the grocery store Aldi's, right? There's a lot of new grocery stores coming on that are going to be super cheap, that might be bulk without a membership. A lot of competition. I see competition for Sam's. I see competition for Costco. I see competition. There's a lot of money there's still a lot of money in the United States. I mean, it's bizarre, but the stock market is cranked up to the max. People have money to spend. It may not be you. It may not be my viewers, but believe me, people are still spending money. That means competitors are going to want to get in that market and they're going to start bringing the prices down that way. So I think those are two pressures that are going to bring prices down. Thank you for your question. And let's move on. Your next question is Kalman, Kalman Law NYC. Uh, will Biden serve his entire four years when he is reelected? I like the way you say when he is reelected. We have trained you well. All right. Um, and will Trump and Roger Stone cause another insurrection? Well, I think Trump and Roger Stone, and don't forget Mike Flynn, because Mike Flynn is really, in my opinion, the catalyst behind this right now. He's kind of doing these barn burner events all around the country. And he's making no bones about what he wants and what he stands for. And, and I think, I think I've seen some things where he may have even alleged violence to get what he thinks we need here. So yeah, they're trying right now. I don't think they're going to be successful. I do not think so. I do think our country is changing. I think our values are changing dramatically. This has a lot to do with us going into the age of Aquarius, but we just started this. So we've got a long, many, many years to figure this out. But I do think we, I think Biden is going to be the steady hand on the tiller right now. And uh, I think that's helpful. Now, your other question is interesting. Will Biden serve his entire four years when he's elected? So if you're, you may not be a viewer of mine for a long time, or you may be, but I have always seen, and I'm maybe I'm wrong. I could be very wrong. I'm just telling you what I saw. And when I get this kind of information, it's the same thing with a lot of things that I've predicted. If the information stays with me, if the if the message, the energy stays with me over months and then year, then then to me, it's got a much bigger opportunity to become reality. If it's something that pops in and goes out, then that's free will. 
I'm also predicting people that have free will. That is insane. It's an insane thing to do, really, to be honest. So what I've always seen with Biden is when I first saw Biden introduce his new VP pick, I wasn't familiar with Kamala Harris because she's a California person and I just never was familiar with her. I saw her on the screen for the very first time and my guides told me she will be president. That's what they told me. And they said she will be the law and order president, which is very interesting because that's what they call Trump. <laughs> so I think it's, I don't think it's a double entendre. I think it's really the energy. I mean, wrap your head around this for a minute, but I think that the Republicans want law and order. You know, they want their own version of law and order. Well, the Democrats want their own version of law and order. Maybe for the Democrats, it's a ban on AR-50, AR rifles. Maybe with the Republicans, it's a wall, an impenetrable border. We both want law and order. We both want a tightening of something, right? We really do. We disagree on what we want tightened up, but we do want a tightened laws. We want more laws. Democrats want more regulations, right? We were just talking on my live with uh, Touch by Tarot, which was a great show, if you haven't seen it, about how during Trump's reign, the White House was just handing out medicine, prescription medicine in baggies with no prescription. <laughs> just here's your uppers, here's your downers. I mean, this has been covered by the news by Rolling Stone magazine. And uh, there's, it's, it's uh, maybe I'll put something on the screen here, but it's documented. This is not a, a rumor. So I feel like I would be very surprised at this point because this energy has stayed with me for all of Biden's first term. And I feel like Kamala is going to be president. Now, I don't think she's going to run for office. I feel like he's going to step down and she's going to step in. I don't feel like he is unalived. I don't feel like it's a big, bad diagnosis. I feel like it's a, I can't do it. I owe the American people 100%, maybe even 150%. Right now, I'm batting at 60. I can't do it. I'm stepping down. I'm giving this to Kamala Harris. And she's going to serve out the rest of his term. Now, to be honest with you, I'm crossing my fingers that he gets through this November, because he's pretty, he, he, when you go into his energy, he's operating off of, I don't even know what he's operating off of. It's up here. His energy is up here. It's not in his body. It's like, it's like this will that he's getting from the divine, right? Like he's pulling so much energy from the divine because he does believe this was his life purpose. And I, I actually agree with him. So he's, it's, his energy is tenuous. Okay. It's, he's, he's, this, this is our job and he's an older guy. So I feel like uh, Kamala's going to share, serve out the majority of his second term. And I don't think she's, what the guides, what the spirit guides told me was she's the law and order president. She's going to serve in a time when there's a lot of civil unrest. If you watched my last video, you know that I believe that we're all going to be in the streets. We're all going to be protesting. Probably everybody, the MAGAs, the Democrats, the kids, the boomers, everybody's going to be in the streets protesting. And she's going to be kind of the figurehead, the leader over that energy. Now, she's a very different energy than Biden. Biden is chill. You know, Biden is a Scorpio. So he's chill. If you make him mad, well, you know, you're going to get you're going to get something. But I think that Kamala is more action oriented. She's more, uh, a little bit more quick to make a decision. And that's going to change everything. That's going to change everything. And I feel like she's going to be the kind of president who will not be, you won't be able to say that she's cutting any slack to the liberal protesters. Let's put it that way. The spirit guides told me she's going to be in favor of putting everybody in jail. She doesn't care if you're on the right or you're on the left. She doesn't care. If you broke a law, if you're if you're having a peaceful pro protest and you walk in on the sidewalk instead of the street, 
and you get arrested, she's going to be okay with that. I, I mean, it's very law and order. Your permit was to walk in the street. You were on a sidewalk. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're red or blue or purple. I don't care. You broke the law. It's very black and white. So the spirit guides told me she would be fair. She would be fair, but she would not be popular. So that's what I see happening. When it's going to happen, I don't know. But I, I just don't see Biden being able to physically go through another four years. Now, of course, if that happens, the Republicans are going to think this was all staged and it's a way to give up, to give us this. I mean, just think about it. We had a, a black male president and look what happened. They all lost their shit. Just imagine when we have a black female president. It should be really fun, you guys. I would stock up not on toilet paper, but on popcorn. All right, I'm going to move on. Cindy Clifford says, um, you're thinking about the energy behind the number of migrants uh, coming into the U.S. at the southern border. What are the deeper energies behind this movement of people? The deeper energies behind this movement of people. The first thing the spirit guides want to say is they're looking for a better life. Um, they're fleeing from violence and poverty and lack of uh, upward mobility. I mean, I don't, I don't, that's just what they're, how they're describing it to me. They, they, there's no way up. They're in a squalor. That's what they're telling me. Now, these um, people are not typically from Mexico. They're typically from Central America. So that's the, one of the deeper meanings. That's one of the deeper meanings. Now, the other thing that's going on, and I feel like the spirit guides are telling me that this has been documented. I have not double checked this. You double check them. You check their work. <laughs> but they're telling me this has been documented, that there have been documented cases of misinformation, uh, encouraging people to leave some of these countries and come to the United States. So according to my spirit guides, there has been some papers, you know, like newspapers or radio or some kind of way that, that people have gotten this impression that they could come to the United States and they could get into the United States. Now, where is this coming from? It could be coming from, you know, the coyotes that uh, make a lot of money taking people from um, the Mexico side to the United States side. It could, could come from, honestly, businesses that de depend on this labor. It, it could come from a nefarious country that is dropping information, disinformation, propaganda. We've all done this. America's done this. You drop pop propaganda, you know, you... You jack up another country by talking to their citizens and telling them something that's wrong, <laughs> you know? So there could be another country sending propaganda saying United States borders are open, you know, head that way. And then they get to the United States and they realize the borders are not open, right? So, um, and the guides are telling me right now that Obama was one of the biggest presidents for uh, deporting people. So- that's the deeper, the deeper energies behind this. And also the guides want to say that this is a hot button. You know, one thing the Republicans do well is they find out what trigger, what trigger makes either people open up their wallet and send in money or go to the polls or get on social media. What trigger, what triggers fear in their people? And then they push until the button wears out and it stops working. For many, many years, it was gay. Anything gay, boom, trigger. Abortion, boom, trigger. Now it's the border. It's always been race. It's always been race. Always been race. So now it's the border. And they're going to, and, and you know, we all know this, right? We all know this. The Democrats have offered to, uh, to sign a bill that was, I think, four times more, many times more than the original border bill. And the Republicans voted it down. So you understand what's happening. They're just wanting to run off of this problem. And I'm just going to add this because the guides told me this earlier, and I this is a really good point, is that 
you know, this whole thing with the budget where we can't get a budget, a year long budget. You know what I mean? We can't vote in a budget that lasts us the whole year. Instead, we're doing these 30 day extensions. Well, do you know why that is? Because they get to run on it every 30 days. It's a continuous campaign. Money, you know, collecting campaign email. It's, how do we get here? How do we get here, right? So we have to do something serious. I don't think it's going to happen soon enough for me personally, but who am I, right? I mean, you know, as long as it happens, it happens. You know, the next things that are going to happen is that some of these Republicans are going to start getting target letters, which means we're targeting you for an investigation. We haven't indicted you yet, but we are investigating you right now. I believe they already got target letters. Three of them got target letters in December. I think several more are getting them right now. Now that is going to put them on edge. I don't know which way that's going to make them go. Probably it's going to make them work harder for Trump because they feel like Trump can pardon them if he gets in. So it's not really going to help us. However, think about we got rid of Santos. Uh, we've gotten rid of, you know, Tucker Carlson. You know, good things can happen and they can happen quickly and they can happen for seemingly no reason. So just hold tight. Changes are coming. Okay. But that's what's going on. I want to say this last thing about the border. I see the Democrats and specifically, specifically Biden coming out with border ideas or border solutions that shock the Democrats, that shock the Democratic constituents, because we're not hardliners on the border. We're just not. Um, but I think Biden is going to be, I think Biden, what I see Biden doing is something so big on the border that it, 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 it has to shut up these people. And I think perhaps he starts working with the Mexican government and there's new technology that's employed. And it's, it's really a game changer on the border. And I really think Biden will shut the border down. I mean, literally just shut it down. I talked about in the last video about how the Democrats have to do things that are more protectionist, that are going to piss off the base. They're going to for sure piss off the liberal wing of the Democrats. But we may have to do it. We're there where our house is on fire. We're trying to put it out with buckets of water. It's not working. We need to really be serious about the situation and then treat it like it's a serious situation. Okay, I'm going to move on to Patricia Crassini. I think that's my next question. Yep. What is the future of the GOP after Trump disappears? That's such a great question. What is the future of the GOP after Trump disappears? Well, the, the future is, is that it's falling apart, okay? I did a whole video on the end of the Republican Party in September of last year. So uh, the spear guides had already gotten the memo on this. Uh, what I see happening, and let me just make sure this is still right, 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 right. Okay, so some of you know that Liz Cheney triggers me. <laughs> <laughs> but she triggers me because my spirit guides have said from the very beginning of this, of the Jan 6 committee hearing, when she was up there being a patriot, they said formidable opponent. And out of all the videos and all the things they've told me, they, these things come and go, they use metaphors, they come and go. They've never stopped saying the words formidable opponent. Here's why. And here's why Liz Cheney is important to the future of the Republican Party. It is going to fall apart. And she knew it was going to fall apart. So she got herself out of it. I mean, she was kicked out of it, but she, you know, she made it so that she could be kicked out of it. And then she joined the Democrats in the committee, the Jan 6 committee. Okay. She took sides. She took the side of America. Good for her. Now, what I've always seen her doing is she knows this party is going to burn itself down. She knows that. So her thing, what I said in this video was two things. Either A, it burns down and then she walks through the smoldering ashes 
<laughs> kicking things with her cowboy boot, you know, trying to see if there's anything salvageable, you know, um, and then decides, yeah, I'll just take over. And then she takes over the Republican Party. Now, if that doesn't happen, if for some reason this party can somehow avoid going off the cliff as another metaphor, you know, Donald Trump is is literally the conductor of this train and everybody's on the train for various reasons. Some of them are being blackmailed. Seriously. Some of them believe in whatever Trump believes in. For whatever reason, they're on the train and they can't get off. I'm going to tell you Lindsey Graham. I'm going to tell you Mitch McConnell. I'm going to tell you Grassley. They cannot get off. Those three people want off of this train. They cannot get off of this train. How do I know they went off? Well, McConnell said recently, we're in a terrible position with this Ukraine bill because he wanted that money to go to Ukraine. You know why? Because American factories are making the money. McConnell said it himself. I don't know why everybody's upset about this money going to Ukraine. It turns around and comes right back to our factories in America. This is putting jobs. This is putting money in America. He's, McConnell has said that. Well, guess what? Just last week, McConnell's one of the people that killed the budget with the Ukraine money. And McConnell came out and said, we're in a terrible position. What does he mean? You know, what do you mean you're in a terrible position? You're the leader of the Republican Party. You've been the leader of the Republican Party forever. And you're saying we're in a terrible position? What you're telling me is I cannot control what is happening. My hands are tied by Trump. Okay? So here we have the Trump train going off, off the cliff. Now, for if for some reason, and I don't see this happening, but if for some reason... Some Republicans get smart. They haven't yet. So I'm starting to lose hope that that's going to happen. And they say, I'm, I'm jumping off of this train. Let the Freedom Caucus go off the cliff with Trump. I'm jumping off of this train. I think that that's going to happen about the time the Freedom Caucus start getting target letters. When these people start getting target letters, believe me, the word is going to spread and people are going to be like, oh, snap. I'm not going to jail. I'm not going to prison for these people. Right. It's one thing to just kowtow and say whatever they want me to say. It's another thing to go to jail. So that's where I think that's going to separate the boys from the men. OK, so if that happens and Liz Cheney can't take over the Republican Party because there's too many of these kind of um, institutional Republicans that still want to control it. And, and she's she's an outsider. She's a she's a traitor to them, then I fully expect her to start her own party. I fully expect her to start her own party. She is not done, you guys. She's a formidable opponent. Please do not mistake her for a friend. She's a Cheney. She's a Cheney, y'all. She's nobody's friend, except for maybe her daddy's. Okay? So, that's what's going to happen. The Republican Party is going to fall apart. We've Many of us have said this. Um, it's not just me. Many of us see the same thing. And then I, this is, we're going to go into 24 with all of this going on. This is one of the reasons why Biden is going to win. The MAGAs aren't even going to show up to vote because if their guy isn't there because he's deceased or because he's incapacitated mentally, they're not going to vote. So even if some of these younger people or minorities who, who are getting kind of upset with Biden say we're not going to vote, we're still going to we're still going to do it. We're still going to get the win. And I think this is going to decimate the Republican Party until 28 and possibly even longer to like 2032 or something. Seriously. I mean, there will be a Republican Party, but they will be in rebuilding phase. Now, why you should be careful around Liz Cheney is because what I saw her doing is, and she's already moved from Wyoming to, I don't know, Virginia, someplace over there. And she's a law professor. She's already doing what I saw her doing. I saw her rebranding herself, rebranding herself and saying, oh, I'm going to come closer to the middle. Remind, let me remind you, 
she voted over 90% with Trump, over 90% with Trump. She did not vote to impeach him. We could have been in a lot different place had she impeached him. Had, you know, we could be in a lot different place if we'd had more votes on this stuff against him. She let his policies ride. She's not a moderate, a moderate anything. She's not. However, she's going to try to convince you, I'm telling you right now, she's going to try to convince you that she's coming to the middle. She's going to rebrand herself. She's going to start saying nice things about school lunches and minorities and gay people. You can't believe her, but that's what she's going to do. Watch that space. Watch Liz Cheney because she's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen next. And then we have to be careful because, you know, us Democrats, we all like to see the good in people and we like to reward her because she really was the good Republican. Honey, she was just a patriot. She just did the bare minimum. Any American should have done, especially one that put their hand on something and swore an allegiance to our country. She's nobody special. She did the bare minimum. Okay. That's why people say that I get triggered right there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to move on. Thank you for your question. Um, but it is important. This is, this is stuff I've talked about months, months and months and months ago, and I need to continue talking about it. Cause I got a lot of new viewers. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for following me. Thank you for subscribing, liking, and sharing. I appreciate you. All right, let's move on. Mom to BZS2, two Bs2. So I don't know what that is. It's probably you're a lot younger than me and that makes sense to you, but not to me. Hi, mom. Okay, will the DACA and then I in, inserted Dreamers recipients get a pathway to US citizenship? Well, you know what? Here's the problem. Yes and no. Before the Republicans lit the border on fire and made all Americans literally divided I literally have divided our country over the border. And as I just said, just described to you guys, that's going to get worse because I really think that Biden is going to take some kind of crazy. I mean, and I'm, it's not crazy, but it's it's um, it's it's big. It's it's a change and we don't do well with change. And it's a strident. It's almost like a strident energy of him like saying. I'm going to yeah, I'm going to take care of the border. You sit down. It's almost like he's telling Congress, you're just kids. Sit down. Let me show you how it's done. I'm going to go over here to Mexico. And we're going to get this done. This is the way statesmen do it. This is the way leaders, world leaders do it. So I really feel like you're going to have this sense of, of, of kind of rising above all this petty fighting. Um, but what that could mean is there could be a deal in the works where the dreamers let me ask Biden. Let me ask him because he's he's a man of his word. And he really has a, a soft spot. He has a real heart for dreamers. I mean, I knew that intellectually, but I but I'm feeling it in my heart. He has a heart. He loves the dreamers. My God, I didn't know this. God, he loves them so much. He sees them as the future of America. Wow, that's giving me chills. I didn't even know that. Golly, that's amazing. Okay, that's cool. Well, I don't, how's he going to pull that off? <laughs> that's my next question. Again, remember that if he's not president in 2026 or 2025, because Kamala Harris is president, I don't know. I, she's a different... She's a completely 100% different energy than Biden. Not saying it's good or bad. I'm saying she's different. So I think if Biden has anything to do with it, he's going to get them a pathway to fit citizenship. And I think he, there there seems to be some things that he wants to get done that, that are his um, milestones. I don't, centerpieces, what they're telling me, centerpieces. I don't know what that means, how they, how they mean that, but like centerpieces of legislation is what they're saying. Yeah, I think he'll do it, but I'm hearing 26, 26. Um, some provisions, the, some provisions will be made. And then I think this uh, final that kind of makes sense because in 25, we're going to have, that makes sense. Okay. Cause in 25, we're going to have the house and the Senate. Please pray for a supermajority. Just pray for a supermajority. 
I know we're going to have the House and the Senate. I don't know if we're going to have a supermajority. If we have a supermajority, then the Democrats are going to fix a lot of this stuff. And, and they're just going to have to do it. They're just going to have to get over themselves about abuse of power. And they're just, just going to have to do it. For the love of God. Pull up your big girl panties. Find your big boy briefs wherever you threw them in the corner. I don't care if they're a week old. Put them on. Pull them up. Get to work. So anyway, yes, I think 26. Because if we have the power in 25, the, the legislation gets passed in 26. It makes sense to me. But in the meantime, I think there'll be, uh, what are they talking about? Co codified? Codified? C-O-D-I-F-I-E-D? Codified. Isn't that when you codify a bill? I don't know what they're talking about. What are you talking about? Fix, codify, support, finished, finalized, finalized, finalized. Something will be finalized. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. Patricia. Oh, that's already read you, Patricia and mom. And I'm down to Cheryl McNutt. Okay. Can the guides tell us when Trump will receive his first criminal conviction? Will he be taken into custody immediately or will they give him two months to appeal the ruling? God darn. Well, this is a tough question because this is the million dollar question. And honestly, what I've been seeing and what everybody else that I, you know, all the other great readers have been seeing is that, well, I don't know what they've been seeing. But anyway, what I see is that he gets to his criminal, let me get him there. Okay. Cause I got to put on my, I got to put on my spiritual hazmat suit now to get in that energy. Cause it's really bad. And then it's going to make me talk about his health. But anyway, it's a very green, like not like, are y'all eating right now? If you are, I'm so sorry. Uh, it's it's like a infection green. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. Um, his first criminal conviction, he gets, he gets criminally convicted. Convicted means he's already gone through the, the court case. He's already gone through the entire trial. Okay, that's the problem. I need to back up and ask the question, can I get him to his, does, is he alive at his first trial? At, at the beginning day, the first day of his first criminal trial, is he alive? Is he with us among the living? Is Trump with us among the living? Yet not yet decided. It's not yet decided. Um, so I, this, and this is exactly what I've seen. And I've told you guys either a, I see him, there's like three options. One, he doesn't make it to the first criminal trial, but he gets close. He gets right up to that time frame, And then he, you know, he's out, he he's pushing up daisies. The other thing is he gets up to that criminal trial and Oh my God, that may, okay. So he gets up to the criminal trial and then he may even <laughs> declare himself criminally insane. <laughs> y'all, y'all, oh, oh my God. I mean, it makes sense because he said, if I go bad, I'll let you know. He said that on a video. He, he was talking to, you know, one of the crowds, you know, 20 people, <laughs> He said, uh, I'll, I'll know. He said, I'll know um, because if I go bad, I'll let you know. Now, what does that mean? That means that he was answering the question of his mental acuity or his mental, you know, health. And that's when he said that. So that implies or implied to a lot of reporters that there and a lot of people in the in the comments were saying doctors and patients and people that have parents and even people themselves apparently there's this test that you can give yourself i did not know this it's called bims or it's just some test that you give yourself for your own mental cog uh, cognition or a mental acuity and it tests your slide into you know, whatever that is, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, whatever it is. Okay. So there's a, there's a test that you can be given that will literally document how you're doing. And he said, if I go bad, I'll tell you. So that just tells you, I mean, it, it kind of foretells, but doesn't he tell on himself all the time? He literally projects everything he's going to do. He says what he's going to do. So 
at the beginning of that first criminal conviction, he might say, I, I want to have a, a mental, I'm not, I'm not mentally able to withstand trial. I'm not kidding you guys. I'm really not kidding you. And, and other people have asked me, would he fake his own death? Um, I've seen all of this, right? Here's the thing. Trump is, it might, you might think he's stupid, <laughs> but reality is, is that he's quite smart. He's, he's very strategic. He might not be smart in, in other ways, but when it comes to figuring out how to get out of something or how to take advantage of something, wily, this kind of wily energy, he's very smart. And he's got, and I, the guides have said this to you many times, he's got backup plans for his backup plans. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do this. If this doesn't work, this is going to, it's almost like um, they get activated, right? Like, okay, so if Jack Smith does this, I'm going to do this. If E. Jean Carroll does this, I'm going to do this. So he's actually got like triggers, lovers that get triggered when something happens, he knows that he needs to go to plan G, plan M, plan, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I think I. the bottom line is this long way to say. I've never seen him finishing his first trial. I would be gobsmacked. I would be. I'd be shocked, shocked if he actually got all the way to the conviction. So I can't tell you when there's going to be a conviction. I don't think he's going to be alive or be on trial when that happens. And I don't know what we do with him. If he says, I'm not mentally stable to withstand trial, and we give him the cognitive test, and we find out that he isn't, he isn't cognitively sound, I don't know what we do with him at that point, right? That's that I not I hadn't well, I did. I did. I've done this. Never mind. I've the guides were like, "Yeah, you did it right here, 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 here and here." I'm like, "Oh yeah." Right. I told you guys cuz see the same thing and it just reminded me. Look, he goes to Gitmo. His options are you know, being planted next to his ex-wife on the golf course <laughs> or Gitmo. And, and when I say Gitmo, you know what I mean? I mean a high security, the kind of place that you would put the the, the alien that, that crashed and burned and you don't want anybody to know, that kind of place. That's where he's going to go. The place where there's no communication, there's no cell phone signal. It's literally off the grid, off the communication satellites. It's that protected. It's that protected. And he's going to go there if he gets found unsound of mind, or if he gets found guilty, which I don't see him getting to, but either way, those are the three options. Planted next to Ivana, get mo, get mo. There's your, those, are your, those are your choices. Let me do maybe one more, and then I might do a part three. Susan Mock says, will Debbie uh, McCarcel Powell, Democratic candidate, Win against Senator Rick Scott of Florida. Will Debbie win against Rick Scott? I just heard no, but there's a but here. Rick Scott is in trouble. I think he's in legal trouble. Fine. He, allegedly legal trouble. Allegedly for entertainment purposes only. Financial trouble. He could be connected to somebody that he doesn't want to be connected to that implies something. And, and I'm getting this sense of he touched somebody and then he got this goo on him and he's trying to get it off. He's guilty by association. Okay. He's got this goo on him. He's trying to get it off. Like I was never, I never knew that person, <laughs> but yet it's pretty clear that he did know that person. So he's in trouble. So if he wins, I don't see him lasting his first full year in his next term. So either, and I can't tell the timing of that, but he's in trouble now. He's mitigating. He's 
he's doing whatever he needs to do. Maybe he's just talking to an attorney. Maybe he's, you know, I don't know. Um, but the energy suggests that this is a bigger deal than he thinks it is. It, it's, it's not a, it's like when you see those pictures of tsunamis and it starts out like a little wave and then all of a sudden it's 30 story high wave, that's what's coming for him. And because I did that kind of quickly, I'm going to do one more. Uh, Jaylene, Jaylenea, maybe. I'm so sorry if I'm uh, screwing up your name. Your question is, Don Jr. has said his dad might choose Tucker as his VP. <laughs> Say it isn't so. Um, no, uh, Don, he is not. This is, they're having fun and games with everybody. And actually that, when when Don Jr. said that, they're showing me that bumped up Tucker, that gave Tucker a bump. You know what I mean? In viewers or money, uh, all the above they're saying. So probably got, a, allegedly got a kickback for that action. Uh, no, uh, the thing is about, about Trump and who he's going to pick for VP. All you have to do is look at Pence, right? Just look at Pence. God bless his soul. He's, he's not going to want a woman. He doesn't trust women. He doesn't understand women. He thinks they're enemies, actually. Uh, he's going to pick a man, I think. And I, I think he's going to pick somebody who's mush, somebody who's like Pence. And it might be the guy that just got um, married, the guy that just got married on the beach because, um, so I'm talking about Tim Scott. And so all these Scots get me confused. Rick Scott is Florida. This is Tim Scott. Tim Scott is the guy that was the 58 year old virgin. I did a video about him and I called it the 50 year old, eight year old virgin, right? It's gonna be vice president. And He's 58 year old virgin because he said he was a 58 year old virgin. He ran on that. He ran on this uber, incredibly tight, you know, religion type thing. Uh, no premarital sex and I'm not married. Therefore, I haven't had sex. Well, then that kind of got to be a problem for him. It got to be a problem. The the Republican, he was he was running for president, right? He was running for president. And people started talking about what well, this is weird. What 50 year old, 58 year old man is a virgin and happy about it. You know, maybe you're weird like those Democrats, <laughs> you know. So he produced this girlfriend out of thin air, literally out of thin air, had her up there on the, you know, dais with him, introduced her, all this stuff. Well, as soon as he stopped running for president, we didn't hear another thing about nothing and then out of the blue last week, he asked her to marry him on the beach in Florida or someplace. And when I saw that, I knew. I'm like, I knew this man is putting his hat in the ring for VP. There's no reason for him to have married her unless he was trying to make himself, you know, fit into the Republican mold of a straight guy with a wife. You know, that's what these are the things you need to have to apply for this position. Um, never mind, unfortunately, that he's a black guy. So we'll see what happens with that because typically that does not fit the Republican uh, job application process. So, but he is sufficiently, you know, a suck up. He's, he's sufficiently a suck up for Trump and he's sufficiently kind of brain dead. You know what I mean? He's a sycophant. So that's the kind of guy that I can see Trump bringing on board. Now, I say this in jest, but I'm not sure that I really mean it in jest. I think Trump would love to have Walt Nauta, his man aide, as his VP because he trusts that guy. He trusts that guy. What does he want for a VP? He wants an assistant. He doesn't want a vice president. He thinks of himself as a, as a dictator or a king. Kings don't have vice presidents. This guy's never going to fill in for me. He's never going to take over. He's just supposed to be my trusted accomplice. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, he got burned by Mike Pence because Mike Pence wouldn't be that trusted accomplice. Mike Pence would not put himself in jail for Trump. That's who he's looking for. He's looking for someone who would go to jail for him. Look at 
uh, Weiselberg, Weiselberg, he put himself in jail for Trump. Look at some of these people that went to jail rather than say anything, rather than be a, a criminal, uh, a prevent, present evidence, a witness. That's what he's looking for. Tucker Carlson is too famous, wants his own fame. You know, they're just they're just playing the bass with this stuff, you guys. They're they're just yanking the bass's chain. This is what they're doing with the border in Texas. They're yanking the chain, going, man, when we do this, we get so much money. It's amazing. No matter how many times we push this button, our internet coffers start going just like Vegas. Ding, 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 and money starts flying in. I'm not saying some of these people aren't serious. Some of these people are serious. However, for the most part, they're doing it for the money. So that's what happened there with uh, the Tucker Carlson suggestion. Hey, if you like this video, thanks for staying to the end and hit the subscribe button. If you came all the way to the end, well, you must have found something interesting. Hit the subscribe button if you think about it. Share it with your Democrat club friends or something. Maybe they need to be walked back from the edge of the ledge too. This video is for entertainment purposes. I am just a psychic. I'm just doing rambling on here. So don't anybody get any crazy ideas. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Take really, really, really good care of yourselves, okay? I'll see you again real soon right here on this channel. entertainment purposes only.